Can you lead us in a quick prayer before we start? Who? Mika. I would love to, but Lil Willie and the baby is making a lot of noise right now, Danny. Um, full pray. Mika, right. have you ever met Ashley before? No, but hi, Ashley. I'm Tamika. Nice to meet you. Hi, <laughs> That's my youngest sister, Ashley. We haven't met? I don't think no. so. No, I met everybody but you. Okay. And Peanut, you haven't met my oldest and you haven't met my youngest sister. <laughs> oh, y'all in Miami? Yes. Oh, okay. Kelsey, no. Um, well, Tan, can you lead us in prayer? Father God, we come to you right now thankful for allowing us to get together and fellowship and gain knowledge from each other. Father God, we ask from this encounter, God, that we gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of whatever it is that we're supposed to when it comes to reading this book and hope that it helps fulfill and make our lives better. And we give you thanks in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Tan, for that prayer. So as y'all know, we are here to talk about enemies of the heart. How many of y'all read the first chapter? I would be honest. I would be honest to you. I'm reading it like right now. Y'all be sleepy. Okay. Well, <laughs> Mika, I heard you all will finish the book. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. So uh, that's no problem. You're muted. That's no problem, uh, Tan, and anybody else who hadn't read the first chapter yet, because the questions, I think there's some good questions. I don't think you have to have read it to just have a little discussion with you what you're going to have tonight. Okay. Um, so I'll start the first question for the discussion and it's talking about Andy in the first chapter and he's basically asking a question. So we can just go around and just answer the question. The question he's asking is, how are things with your heart? And that can mean whatever it means to you, uh, but just in whatever mind frame that you're in, just kind of share with us how are things with your heart? You want to start off for us, Ash? <laughs> um, I was trying to think as you were asking that. Um, I don't know. I feel like that's a jam-packed question. You know, there's so much you could say about it. Um, a lot of times we say, well, you know, well, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. I think a lot of times for me, well, I'll have like good intentions with something, but then, you know, the action or the follow through may not be pleasing to God, you know, of Ooh, course, that's good. we're not, we're not that's perfect, good. but I, I desire to do right, but I fall short, you know, and then I'm frustrated, which then it gets in my head. So it's like the matters of the heart travel and then your mind messed up and then your heart and your emotions. So it's like, mm -hmm. An entanglement. <laughs> I can say <take> <laughs> um, so that's that's how I feel. So I'm just kind of in that place of I want to please God. I have the desire, but I don't always do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't do, but I do the things that I'm not supposed to be doing. Yeah, thanks for saying that. And this is this is a I think this is a this is a good group for us to just be honest. We're not with each, only with each other, but with ourselves. And um, I guess to answer the question, I'll go ahead and go next. Um, sometimes I think my heart is good. I guess that's what we try to lie and tell ourselves. Mm. But even as I read the book before we even start the book club, as he was pointing things out, I was just thinking about myself. You know how the Bible says, search your heart. And I hate to make it seem like I'm blaming other folks, but just a lot of things that you go through, how folks treat you, mm -hmm. it, it made me say, man, my mm -hmm. heart ain't healthy right now because mm -hmm. the way people treat me is almost like a reaction or based off how you treat me is based on what you will get from me. And, and that's, that's not really a good thing because if you treat me bad, that means it's not no necessarily mean that I'm going to treat you bad, but I'm not going to treat you as best as I could, right? I may have something hidden in my heart, like, 
I ain't doing nothing for them jokers. They doing this to me, doing that to me. And I don't think that's what God wants for us. So in that sense, you know, I think my heart, man, my heart is in a better place, but prior to what, prior to this, like in January, early this year, my heart wasn't in a good place. And so it's an everyday fight. Just trying to, it's hard to keep your heart right, especially when folks mm -hmm. right by you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my spirit. Anybody tan on me can go next. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that I'll fall back good on some of what Ashley said about you know your intentions are pure, like your heart is pure to do the right thing, but you just don't do it. But I would say, and then I'll fall back a little bit with Dan. What Daniel said is, you know, I think I have one of the most genuine and loving hearts there is but again when when it comes to people and and you feel like when your heart is you coming from a good place and then people just intentionally you know hurt you or intentionally just do malicious things in general then you go to questioning like why do I why am I being why do I have a good heart like why why am I being in a sense the the bigger person and then you just want to go and just do evil stuff back. <laughs> so, so I would say that I think I I thought my heart was good, but sometimes revenge is sweet. I I would say. I think um, chapter one was really good because um, every I noticed when I went to reading it when he asked about how's your heart, like I I. For me, as an individual, I've always had to have my heart in check. I've always had to have my heart in check because that's how I keep going. Like, that's my drive. I always feel like I have to be in a happy place. And anything that disrupted, like, I get rid of it real quick. But um, when I was reading it, uh, it was like aspects that I never thought of how he was um, directing you to think about, like, how's your heart? I was like, you know, well, generally, you know, my heart's good, but then... When he went to, like, it was just different views that I never thought to think of. And then um, I went to thinking about things like um, people that I know, um, movies that I watch, and seeing, like, how people were raised and the things that they went through and how it affected their heart and the person that they've grown to be. And, boy, um, people can go through some things and people can hold some things and it can really damage your heart yeah. and have you like some people, a lot of people can be just be messed up if they have a damaged heart. And it, it just was interesting to see the different aspects that he brought. And it just made me want to read more. <laughs> he brought Man. my attention, made me want to, you know, read more and also keep an open mind too. Yeah. Mika, well, you brought up a good point. Uh, as you was talking, I was just thinking about some relationships that I was in. Uh, that can make you, man, relationships can make you turn into a beast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I, can I cut in real quick? Can yeah, I cut ahead. in real quick? Okay. So listen, you know, I'm a power fan, right? So just sitting here thinking about this, I thought about when I was watching the recent episode with, um, with Ju Jukebox, Ju Jukebox, that's her name. Yeah. You know, and then all of them really, how they came to be where they are now and then you go back like now it's showing you in the beginning from the beginning and what she went through when she got caught doing something she wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to do and how the the lady's mom just tore her down and she was already a fragile person and look at look how they were in the streets and doing these things like at that age you shouldn't be doing stuff like that you should it's just a lot of stuff that they were doing and i just it just made me think how like it just came to me that's why they became the people that they were you know the things that yeah. they went through boy that lady really like troubled her you could see she was like really messed up by that yeah and instead of motivating her she just kept tearing her down tearing right her down and that time. really messed yeah. her up that really messed her up and so talking about the heart that just you know that's just one example that just jumped out that, that showed me you know so, so th that's a good segue for me to just say this <laughs> that's why I don't know people act the way they act because you, you mean you don't know what they've been through and so yeah, that's why us as believers yeah. 
we got to always have either a kind word or a word from mm-hmm. God for, for somebody to encourage them because you don't know what right. their heart has yep. gone through. Mm-hmm. Yep. Them yep. How yep. Yeah. How fragile they are. Yep. Yeah. And you can be that small little hope, you know, to push them in the right direction. So, so when we go about our day, I'm sorry, as I'm going to say this, I'm going to shut up and let you go. When we go about our day, oh, it looks like you want to say something. When we go about our day and we encounter people in the grocery store or whatever, especially in Miami, Lord knows, rude, disrespectful folks, mm-hmm. there's no common courtesy. I mean, you mm-hmm. can just look at them. You can look at them and be like, my God, what have they been through to make them act like this? You know, it's a heart issue. Mm-hmm. What, what, yep. what have somebody done to them to yep. the point that they're acting like this? Yeah, their experiences. Mm-hmm. You was going to say something, Ash? Well, I was going to say, hey, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oftentimes what I tell people. They be like, Tim, you just look at stuff. Hello. But you got to look at where I came, where we came from, how we grew up, the experiences that we had. Right. And that, that's the reason why we're the way that we are. But we don't notice, like, dang, you, Tim, you coming off a little too tough or you coming off a little aggressive. And, but to me, that's normal. But yeah. to other people, it's just like, man, she just tore me up. And then you don't feel bad about it or how you affected them because that's just something that's normal to you. Yeah. Even still, it's not an excuse, though. No, I'm not saying that it's an excuse. But I'm just also, saying that's just like oftentimes if if me and you, me, you and Daniel had the same growing up pattern, we experienced mm-hmm. the same thing. You and Daniel yep. wouldn't check me. Y'all wouldn't check me or correct me that I was wrong. Cause guess what? To y'all, that's normal too. And he mentions that in the book. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> so that's, that's what I mean when I say that. So yeah, we need people around us to, to help us get our heart in the right direction because oftentimes people that had the same experiences, they're going to see it the way we see it. Or, you know what I'm saying? If that makes yeah. sense. That's why you got to give people grace because we're all yeah. not the same. I don't know where you've been. You don't know where I've been. Mm-hmm. So I try to do that because I got people mm-hmm. on my job that, man, mm-hmm. they found off like nothing. And the inside of me be like, I want to give it back to you how you get this. And I'm, I'm like, so no, I can't. Like, I have to be let my words be seasoned with grace and, you know, let mm-hmm. it be edifying and all that. So, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you do that, Ashley? Uh, you know, how do you fight the flesh when you want to give people what they give you? How do you do that? I think you have to not respond so quick. You know, you yep. have to take a moment and be like, <laughs> yep. hold on, let me see what I was thinking. Back up, let me get my thought together. Yep. And hey, swallow. Yep. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and you um, got to calm down. And then maybe later when you done calm down, you can still read them or or you can still let them know, hey, respect me. But, you know, when you done calm down, you know, just let them know in a calm manner, you know, tell them how it is, but just don't disrespect them, you know, say it in a way that you mean it. And, you know, you 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 deserve your respect. You, you want your respect. <laughs> Mika, when, when Tim was explaining about people being, you know, brought up in the same household or have the same mindset, and you said they talked about that in the book. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Do you remember? You, well, 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 say that again, Daniel. When, when Tim was talking, she was saying about, gave an example of people were raised in the same household or what have you. And they may be going off, but to them, that's normal. But to anybody else, excuse me, it's not. And you was like, yeah, he talked about that in the book. Some people don't. Some people, see, that's why he says you you have to be the one to monitor your heart. Some people don't know. Like she said, some people don't know. But at the same time, it's not an excuse. They don't mm. know. And they they live life, you know. In their own world, how you know, based on what they know and what they grew up on and their experiences in life. But it's, it, it comes a time when you cross paths with people because you, you can't help it. You're going to cross paths with people and you end up knowing more about yourself by being around others. Because <laughs> a lot of things that you're used to, everybody else is not used to. Yeah. 
Big fat nigga. But, but to get back to the book, let me see. Hey, so this is a question for everybody. How do you how do you examine your heart? How do you look at your heart? Mm. The way, see, that's the thing. The way I thought, the way I looked at my heart is different from that's what I was saying. You know, he he had me thinking in ways that I it was a whole different perspective. Yeah. On page eight, it's talking about monitoring your behavior versus your heart. So your behavior is not necessarily your heart because you can pretend and be nice. So when I just look at that, I'm like, well, dang, how do you monitor your heart? You know, but they say out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I don't know. That's a good question because it, it just seems contradicting because it's talking about your behavior is not your heart, but then your and then it talks about your heart is deceitful and so I don't know I gotta like really think about that. Yeah. So when, when you think where, about, go ahead. I was gonna say page ten is where he was talking about examining the heart, and I remember he was explaining about man he was he taught me some stuff I didn't know about the heart. I mean. He was just saying how things could be tricky too. Like you can be confused in your mind. Okay, as far as the body, you know how tricky the body can be. He was explaining, you know, how tricky the body can be. Um, you know what? Just go on past me because my mind is coming and going. Oh, go in the other room. Go in the other room, baby. <laughs> I'll get to my point I'm trying to make in a minute, Dang. <laughs> go in the other room, Pa. I got to make so, so on page 10, when he's talking about the heart exam. Just like with your fleshly heart, um, if you have a heart issue, you will see those signs, those symptoms. You might get a chest pain. You might get headaches, just like these, these blockers that he's talking about. I think it's the same way with our spiritual heart. Um, because if you know, if you got a problem with somebody, and I'll just speak from experience, for some reason, that person always on your mind. And if they're always on your mind, you're always talking about them. It can be negative. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be negative. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be the way you felt or what you think they done wrong to you. And so, and not only that, you know you got a heart issue, you can examine your heart when at one point, hey, you wouldn't mind doing X, Y, Z for this person. But now you feel some type of way, so now you're not doing what you're used to. Let's say God, for example. You know, you were sold out with God. You, you know, you, you're serving, you're serving his people, you, you're, you're, you're being obedient in your tithes and offering. Uh, you're giving to the poor, you're praising them, you're praying to them, you're good. But let's say you have a death in your family. Now all of a sudden, you are angry and mad at God. And all of those things that you used to do for God, you no longer do them. So now it's your time to sit back and examine your heart and say, well, hold on. I used to have this love for God, but now I'm pissed off. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go to church no more. I don't want to read my Bible no more. I don't want to hear nobody talk about Jesus in this house. I don't want nothing. So that's one way, you know, you have certain symptoms. And those symptoms are what you used to do. You no longer want to do. Why? Because your heart is not in it no more for whatever reason. Mm. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Like when people hurt by church folk and they, they just no longer want to go back to church or they just no, want, no longer want to be affiliated with people who talk about church, period. You know, because for whatever reason they've been, you know, damaged and hurt. Let's let's go to question two. Anybody want to read it or you want to? Mika, can you read question two? Where's the question? Oh, the back of the book. Ash. Oh. Okay, it's in the back of the book. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tim, you what? are you ready, Tim? You can't read question two. Let me get that. I didn't know that. Uh, hey, I okay. wish I'd, I didn't know these about that. <laughs> <laughs> Question two, it says, what kinds of things are most likely ready. to act as a disruption to your sense of inner peace and well-being? Mm. I think he was talking about that when he said, um, like, I know, I don't know exactly what he said, but I know when um, he said, when I read it, I was like, you know, 
I want to go to church. I want to go to church. <laughs> I want to go to church. And my, my spirit keep bothering me about wanting to go to church and doing right. And this one sin I want to stop doing. And I, and I just, it just, it's just hard to do. Just hard to stop. That stuck out to me. <laughs> Got the thing in my way. So what kind of thing? That, that's what that what that's what um interrupts my inner peace. What? Knowing knowing that I'm doing wrong, but I, my heart want to do right. Yeah, that's I, what disrupts my inner peace because that thing messes with my head and it bothers me. And it's like it's like it's just like hey hey, <laughs> do right. <laughs> like a conviction. Mhm. Mhm. Mm -hmm. I think in this day and age, um, for me, I'm going to say social media, because if you're constantly on social media, you seeing, oh, so-and-so is doing this, and they bought this, and you're playing the comparison game, and you're like, well, oh. that is, like, you look at, you're examining your life, and you're wanting, and now you're envious, and jealousy, all that stuff can oh. come out of just what other people have, that's even fake. Like you don't even know if that stuff is real. So exactly. you're coming up with all this stuff based on social media. So that that's a huge one, I think. Yeah, you don't even know if they're struggling the 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 live this life because they saw somebody mm -hmm. else living this, this life and they yeah. struggling to the the to live this life based off of somebody else's reality on Facebook. Yeah. Some Something that disrupt my inner peace is when people lie on me. I oh. just do something to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't lie on me, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. I think that's all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. Say what I said. Actually, if y'all okay, let's go ahead and move to number three. Ash, go ahead and take us out with number three. In what ways do you, like Andy, tend to modify your behavior to avoid pain? That's a good one. That's deep, bro. Sometimes ignored. <laughs> Act like it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. So is that a good thing? No. No. Why not? Come on, elaborate. Because it's not solving the root issue. It's not solving the problem. And the pain That's good. Right. So yeah. that's good, Mika. So it's not... So instead of so what we so what should not, we do then? Treat the symptom. No, not don't treat the symptom, treat the root problem. <laughs> so I think in the book somewhere, and I hope I'm not jumping the gun, and I think a lot of people have a hard time with this. So Mika, you said that a lot of times to avoid the pain, we ignore it. And actuality, just like the Bible says, if you know there's an issue, we should be confronting. Yeah. And a mm -hmm. lot of people have an issue with confronting. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because it's painful, maybe because it is hard to do, which it is hard mm -hmm. to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, man, a lot of people do mm -hmm. ignore the situation of what pain, but guess what? That's making it worse. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's tougher to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's sit right here for a minute. Why is it so hard for us to confront things that bother our heart, that bother us, and bother <laughs> our inner peace? I guess it's like the reality. You're like, well, that's not me. Like you just coming to terms with you have this perception in your head of who you think you are and who you want to be. And when your heart contradicts that, you're like, well, dang, that that that's not me or that's not who I want to be. So it's kind of like the flesh of it kind of like Warren. It's like I think for me with confrontation. Even though it's hard, even for me, but I don't mind doing it. I just don't like to be misunderstood when I am. Uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. want to be like, oh, who he think he yep. is coming to me about this? And yeah. that's how I'm coming to you. Not even in that with that energy. I'm mm -hmm. coming to you, one, out of respect, because I respect you. And two, because I want to nip something in the bud that I think is a problem. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah. I'd rather free myself and you to come talk to you about it, even though it's a hard conversation to have. But mm -hmm. that is humbling yourself, oh letting that pride go, because oh nobody mm -hmm. wants to admit, hey, I, I'm feeling jealous or envious or bitter or whatever. <laughs> Who wants to go to somebody and say, I feel this way? Yeah, nobody. 
I mean, that's tough. Who, who wants to humble themselves and make themselves feel weak and be like, hey, man, you hurt my feelings, man. You was wrong. I thought we was better than that. Yeah. And sometimes it's all a person knows. But then sometimes the heart can become the heart can become weak because you you afraid to you afraid to confront that person. You know, like you 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 scared of the reaction that that person gonna give you. Yes. Yep, and you already know. Like, say for instance, when a person like when. I hate when people say, oh, that's just how they are. Like, that's just how somebody is. And then after a while, people, you know, when that person just blatantly do do people wrong or hurt people's feelings, like you be wanting to say something, but oftentimes when you see that person reaction is always one of being combative or aggressive, guess what? You be like, nah, I'm just going to back off from this because, you know what I'm saying? I don't want that pressure, you know, or want to deal with that attitude. But what about people? Go, you gonna say something? Else? Mm-mm, I just say yeah, I'm agreeing. What about people in power? Your supervisor, your boss. Uh, mm. They they, mm. they did wrong. They did something dead wrong. They treated you dead wrong. It can even be sexual harassment. They did wrong. And to avoid the pain, to avoid the conversation, uh, you, you say nothing. Can you imagine the effect on your heart that will have, even towards mm-hmm. other folks? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or with yourself, like you can modify your behavior with yourself to avoid pain. So say something triggers and you're having thoughts about things. Like I know for me, mm-hmm. if there's something that comes up and I don't want to deal with it, my thing is I'm going to just watch TV. I know I need to be praying. I know that I'm feeling some type of way. And mm-hmm. something from my childhood may have come up, but mm-hmm. I don't feel like dealing with that. So I'm going to modify my behavior and I'm going to watch TV or I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to do something to get my mind off of it. And mm-hmm. I'll put that later. But all you're doing is just suppressing it because it's yeah. going to keep coming up. So you got to address it eventually. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yep. All right. Who want to take, take number four? I'll take four since I didn't get to be yet. Right. What are the potential da- uh, dangers involved in allowing unresolved issues or conflicts to smolder in our hearts? Oh, wow. That's a good question. We touched on a little of it. Go ahead, Mickey. You can mm-hmm. make first, first deals at it. It's like what she said, because what she, when she just said uh, something in her childhood and it, and it always triggers, and it, you know, it comes up and it triggers her, it's going to keep, you know, it's going to keep causing turmoil, turmoil in your heart. It's better, and that in that case, it's better to just deal with it so that way your heart is no longer heavy. No, you're no longer burdened. Because that's that right there. That's a lot of weight to carry right now. If I keep pushing this to the side, how you treat me? If I if, if potential um, things, yeah. uh, if I keep on um, not resolving it, one day I'm just gonna snap. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's I'm gonna, gonna be bad. I'm gonna snap. Yeah, yeah. And then you're gonna be looking at me like, well, dog, what I it can be the smallest thing you said. Mm-hmm. But after mm-hmm. so long of me avoiding, 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 <laughs> you can sneeze and it ain't gonna make me mad. I'm gonna just go. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. What could have been a small, simple conversation. Now mm-hmm. we ain't friends no more because yeah. you blew up at me and the situation escalated when. We could have drank it years ago or months ago. You know what? Now, okay. since I've held it in my heart so long, guess what? Now you have caused me to sin. Yeah. Anger, you caused yep. me to sin against you and God. Yeah. You could have just had a conversation about it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. one, you might get cussed out. One, you might, I might throw the hands at you. Ain't no telling woman throw at you. <laughs> Murder, malice, all that stuff builds up in the heart. Yeah. And now, boom. That's good. Tim, you want to add something to that? Mm-mm. That, was, that was the, you know, horizontal relationship. But within yourself, if if you're not dealing with that, okay, so then you have issues loving other people, I feel like. So then it pours into your relationships. I feel like 
if your relationship with yourself is not right, your vertical relationship Ooh. with God and your horizontal Ooh. relationships with Ooh. other people Come on, are not going to be tight. Ooh. So you got to mm-hmm. solve that stuff. Yeah. And I keep going back to me because I have issues mm-hmm. with I'm not even talking about other people. Right. So right. I got to get me right first before I be yeah. talking about, you know. Yep. Yeah. No, that's right. Yep. Yeah. That's good, Ash. Um, and you made me think of something. Not only that, if we have all these unresolved issues, conflicts in our hearts, what about loving ourselves? We may commit suicide. We yeah, supposed to talk to the other yeah. person about it. And it's like our walls closing in on ourselves. So we just, you know what, I'm just get this over with. Then the yeah. devil start lying to you. You ain't worth it. Don't nobody mm-hmm. care about that. Mm-hmm. Isn't that? Mm-hmm. And then now the devil going to trick you into killing yourself. Suicidal thoughts. Because you got to get this stuff off of you. You got to get it out. And there's a way that you can do it. That's um, good. More people think about suicide than we know. People don't want to admit it, but that's that's real. And you talk about the heart, man. I, I think a lot of stuff that's dealing with the heart causes us to be depressed and fall into depression. Yeah. Because it, it, it is. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Yeah. Um, so number five says, Andy refers in this chapter to God's statement in Ezekiel 36 about giving his people a new heart. In this passage, God says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of, of flesh. What, if anything, do you find especially encouraging? And that promise and why. And then it says, what questions arise in your mind in response to that promise? So what do y'all think about that? God knew what he was doing when he made us, I mean, from A to Z, because he knew that we would experience some things on this world. He knew. And I am, and I thank him. And Lord, I thank you right now, because if it weren't for you, just giving us the power to just speak life, and speak, you know, hey, God, give me a new heart. Renew my mind. Renew my spirit. Oh, my God. A lot of us will still be in trouble to this day. But those of us that know that we have the power to speak that, man. For those that don't know, Lord, help them. He knew what he was doing. That's all I can say. And I thank God for that much. Right. Because in this world, oh, my gosh. That is needed. People go through so much. That is needed. Where did everybody go? I'm reading it again. Oh yeah, I was I was looking at it too. I mean, just pulling different things out. But like you said, he already wrote that he was going to give us a new heart before we were even created because he already mm-hmm. knew mm. our heart <laughs> wasn't mm-hmm. going to be good. So mm. like you said, like. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you had a plan in place. He could have yep. just left us with a stony heart, you know? Yep. He could have left us yep. in the flesh, but he said, yep. no, I'm a make it too. Yeah. So, and, you know, you have to have a renewed heart and a renewed spirit in order to walk this Christian walk, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's true too. Yeah. That's, that's a part of the salvation package. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the promise. <laughs> So that's on top of salvation, hey, we got freedom, <laughs> deliverance, healing, heart, spirit. Mm. We got everything new. <laughs> so look, talking about a stony heart. Look, Jesus, man, he had to know what we we're gonna go through. Look at something as small as this. We have so much in our on our mind and in our heart. Even when we do praise and worship, whether it's at church or in our own home, I mean, we just sit down in church like a bum on the wall. We sit there with our arms folded. That's a depiction of the heart. Oh, um, that's how you work it. There's <laughs> so much stuff on our heart, so much stuff on our mind. We can't even worship and praise God. We have a stony heart. We can't even say thank you. We can't even say, hey, how you doing? Yep. Our heart is just so stony. We can't even say, man, I forgive you. Or, man, I'm sorry, I messed up. That's the issue of the heart. And so when we come into God, come to Christ, 
supposedly it would change. We're supposed to have a new heart and new heart. the way that we treat and act and act towards one another. Those things should change. Those things should change. Um, so I love that. what question arises in your mind in response to that promise? I'm glad I got a new heart because y'all, I promise you, man, y'all be experiencing a different DC, man. Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. so glad that he gave me a new heart. I'm so glad he had this in his plans and he knew uh, that we would need a new heart. Yep. And I think this new heart thing is just like what Paul said as far as killing the flesh daily. I think it's an everyday thing that you got to do it because we can easily revert back. Right. That heart is still there. And so that's why it's important that we get in fear <laughs> every day because DC can come out at any moment. That that heart, yep. that pain is still there. What our experience, our life experiences, that don't go away when we get saved. No, nope. that person is still there. So if we're not constantly changing, that old heart can can turn back hard instantly. I'm back. Yep. So that was my question. It said, "What question?" So I was gonna say for everybody, give one trait of your old heart and one trait of your new heart. <laughs> I would say for me, unforgiveness. I can hold grudges. You can ask my wife. Man, I used to be the grudge holder, the champion. <laughs> <laughs> Not a champion. You hear me? I would, just, I would walk around mad three, four a week. Really? Wow. And that takes a whole lot of energy. Yes, it does. Weigh yourself <laughs> I was the Weigh grudge holder. And if she listening, she'd probably jump on and put her two cents in. But, uh, with her help and with definitely with God, man, man, you just gotta let stuff go. Life is too short, man. Yep. So uh I've I've learned to love people and you can do me wrong right now today, tomorrow, man. It'll bother me if I don't talk to you. I, I have to call you, I have to love on you. And so that's a new trait. I, I I'm a level, I'm I'm I will love you even if you do me wrong. Sometimes it may take more time than than, uh, right. than others, but based on what you did to me, right? So yeah, I'll come around. Mm -hmm. you forgiving you forgiving but you're not forgetting <laughs> that's God who next what you say who next actually ask a question about an old trade and a new trade I don't understand the question what you say, I, now, I'll say my, yeah I'll say my same thing too like I used to hold like I used to hold grudges, like especially like if you hurt somebody that I love or somebody that I care about, you ain't even really had to hurt me or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna not like you, or I'm just I could see you look you in your face, and I will not speak. And you have never done me wrong. You have never done nothing to me. So I I learned my old traits. Stop taking on other people's battles. Like I used to take on other people fights and other people battles, and I no longer I no longer do that because man that was that was draining because some some of my people and my friends used to not like a lot of people, mm -hmm. so I say that's the old trait and a new trait. I no longer take on people battles, and I definitely don't get in situations that don't involve me. Mm. Oh, trick, trick. I would mm. say the old me was very pessimistic. It was like looking mm. for the bad. It was just come on, pessimistic. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him. Negative. It was just a negative. And now I'm more like compassionate and grace. And I'm like, oh well, they, you know, they probably didn't mean it like that, or you know, just give them grace. I'm like, no, it's so it's like opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Me? I'm not saying I'm perfect, but what I'm just saying is like maintaining, maintaining the good stuff, you know, maintaining all the positive stuff. And and then not only that, trying to be even better, becoming even better, just becoming even better, more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm giving y'all what y'all trying to. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll take it. Because <laughs> I kind of stepped out and try to get some light to figure this out. Uh, you know, the baby and everything. It's all good. But, uh, 
So look, number six. So number six. Let's let's end it with number six real quick, and then if y'all got anything else to say, we'll say it. Number six says, "What obvious evidence? Obvious now, evidence? Do you Ooh. see in your life that God has more work to do in your heart? Help us. <laughs> that your sanctification is not yet complete. Mm. Help us, Lord. Mm. What evidence do you see that God ain't done with you? Who is what he's asking? Say that again. What what evidence do you see in your life that really that God got more work to do on you? No, I heard that you said something at the end. And you want to real quick. That um, your sanctification is not not yet complete. Ooh. Ooh. Obvious evidence. Obvious evidence. Obvious evidence. I mean, obvious to. Well, it's obvious that well, sin I mean, daily. I mean, that's yeah, obvious. But a lot of sins are nobody knows what your sin is unless it's like that's iniquity. Yeah, murder. Right. Well, obvious evidence. My is. my obvious evidence is. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> oh, we had to do the face. Oh, <laughs> that one of them all play by my tan faces. Oh, okay. girl, come on now. So, so how I know God ain't, ain't ain't got more work to do with me, and that my sanctification is not complete. It seems like just when you think you say, just when you think right. you arrive. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, that thing that you thought you were delivered from, that thing that you thought you were saved from, it's still there. And I still need to pray. I still, you know, <laughs> you think that it's gone because I guess it's just been far away for two years, three years, and then all of a sudden you're still struggling with that thing. Not saying that you're doing it, but you're like, well, dog, where did this come from? I thought I was over this. Yeah. And that <laughs> showed me, hey, boy, your sanctification is not complete. God, he got a lot more work to do with you. And that's okay. As long as we can realize that and be real with ourselves. Like, God, dog, I thought I was done with it. But no, I still need your help in this area. And you don't have to be real with with nobody else, but be real with yourself and God and say, God, boy, I need you right here. And and that's how you know how to, you know, put barriers up. And if you are married, you know, hey, baby, I still feel my weak point, no matter what it is. If they're a team, baby, this is my weakness. I need you to pray for me in this area. I thought I was over this. And so that's how I know that he's not done with my sanctification yet. Okay, man. I got to think on this question here. Man, I still be wanting to get people to business. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, and I know, I know God still. No, and, and I think it's because I, I used to pray for a long time, Lord. And and this is a, a crazy thing to pray, but I used to pray, Lord, let me just be saved 80%. And then that 20%, <laughs> let me keep that 20% because God, I just feel somebody going to try me. And if I'm that 100%, I ain't going to be able to give it to him like I want to be able to give it to him. And now every day I'd be like, God, like, I don't want that 20% no more. Because I really do, I don't want to be so quick to let my I don't want my end result always to be to give somebody the business like I want it I want it to be a different like a different outcome but I just be ready to give me a test like hey, Ted, I think I'm not sometimes I don't want to be a different outcome sometimes I'm like these folks really don't know who they messing with yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I'm saying it ain't now, good. oh my god god I feel so. I, I, I shouldn't. Yeah. I, I don't want to let mm-hmm. this happen to me. I'm like these Ooh. folks really don't know who they messing with. Like man, ten, you just let man, you just let old girl just just slide on you. You ain't say nothing. <laughs> like man, that twenty percent going away is like at fifteen. Like it's decreasing by the day. But that's how I know God ain't. He is certainly not done with me yet. Cause like when it come to my then you already know Mika. When it come to my family and my siblings. Like my my tolerance level go to zero. Like I just be ready to get a people chest. And I and I know God ain't finished with me yet, but he he gonna get me there. And I'm gonna say this about that. Um you talk about the 80-20 10. 
uh, deliverance. Some deliverance is instant. God can deliver mm-hmm. you from things instantly. But yep. some things, are, it's a process. Over yeah. time, God will deliver you from that thing, man. Uh, so that's the good thing about God, you know. Some things instantly, some things is a process. Yeah. Ashley, For example. I don't think you go ahead Ashley I was I was trying to think um I mean I don't know if it falls in the realm of what it's asking but for me I know I'm not where I need to be spiritually mm-hmm. it is a matter of the heart because I you know, know there's things I should be further along than I am but uh-huh. I'm not because of fear which is a hard issue um what other people may think which is a hard issue so it's Mm -hmm. kind of like i feel like i've been pleasing people more than i've been pleasing god just to sum it up and you know i I got a long way to go girl you about to make me shout on that one right there i got to (laughs) preach that one right there listen oh boy you said something there ashley real honestly but we care so much about what people think. But people say they don't, but that's a lie. Yep, it's, that's, a, that's lie. a lie. They do. It truly is. Hey, you let know. me share this with y'all. Quick testimony about that. We are selling ourselves short when we do that. And I'm just, listen. Yes. And, and <laughs> listen, when we really know who God is, I think we'll stop doing that. And I, I had the experience that I had, man, listen. Forget man and 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 and, and step on and, and believe God. No matter what, I'm telling you, y'all, it it it's, it will increase your own power within your own self. Some of us women know how much power we got because we're trying to please man, and we think mm. man got what we need. Yeah, and it, it's like a it's like a magic. It's like a deceiving trick that man got on us. You yeah. ain't got nothing, Joker. God yep. has it all. I'm telling y'all, bro. This is a whole know. discussion. This topic itself is yes, like- it is. A whole, yeah. <laughs> like those people, like when you want to be, you want to be popular, you want to be in that circle, that it circle, that A-list circle, man, you you do some crazy stuff, man. Yeah, to me, it's like you still want to be relevant, but you want to be a, a, 100% down with Christ, but you want to be like, still yeah. trying to do your thing. But it's like, God, God be like, girl, if you don't stop, <laughs> like, Come on, do what you like. Talking. Do you not know where I could take you? That's what mm-hmm. you just give me a hundred percent of you. Do you not know I could take? Like I always think about um, that scripture in the Bible where it said God will place you in rooms and at tables with people that you're not even deserving of. Like you're not even deserving of being. I oftentimes think of that, but then I just be like, man. Yeah, Sometimes it just seems easier to. Deal with those people and make Trying them like please that. man instead of God. Y'all crazy. Yeah. I want to know something else. Y'all want to know something else? What's that? Mm-hmm. So having children will um like having smaller kids that you have to take care of, it takes up a lot of time. And um sometimes it it kind of acts as a go get in the bed. <laughs> it acts as like you're um busy always yeah. busy mm-hmm. and so I think like at some point I actually got addicted to being busy and mm-hmm. it's like um it really did take a toll on my relationship with God because I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be and it's because I'm I'm always thinking about all this other stuff that I need to do. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go on the Bible app as soon as I get in the bed or something like that. And then it never happens. And it's like, because I'm so busy, I'm over here, I'm over there, I'm doing this, which is understandable. God understands because he gave me the kids and I got to take care of them. But at the same time, I got to um, stop being so addicted to busy and yeah. Put put some time in there for him because even if it's just twenty minutes, he understands because he gave me my brain. He knows how my brain works. 
he know how it works with the children or with anything else. So he knows that I'm not intentionally not reading my word, intentionally not doing what I'm supposed to do. It's just, I'm literally just addicted to being busy. And I feel like all of that stuff is kind of like more important. And then when it boils down to it, when it's time for me to do, you know, praise and worship, read my Bible, read a devotion. Like, I'm going to be honest with y'all. So I, I even tell, um, I even tell Daniel, babe, I can't keep up. I can't keep up with you. Yes, oh, Lord. I cannot <laughs> keep up. Y'all, I get it's, it. It's, it's, um, oh. it's kind of bad because mm. it'll be, he done did this, this, and this. Yep. And I haven't even watched. Yep. Whatever from oh, I understand. <laughs> and like me as yes, his wife, I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be like number one supporter, number one fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to know exactly what he's talking about. Know the message and watch the message. And I'm be honest with y'all. It's plenty of them that I just, I never watched. And I never even knew they were on there because I just can't keep up. Mm -hmm. but that's not an excuse mm -hmm. because you know I could find the time to set aside here mm -hmm. maybe instead of me taking my hour lunch break take the 30 minute lunch break where I'm eating and then the, the, next, the 30 minutes I'm doing what I need to do to like watch his sermons or watch the word of the days or go on my bible app just whatever and not be so addicted to busy Mm, that's good. I concur with Ashley and Manny. They both brought up some good points um, about where they where you know when she was saying where she is in life. I saw myself in the past like I should be wait. I should be like I should be. I should be not where I am right now. I never thought that I would be where I am spiritually right now. Um, that's one thing. And then being here with the kids. Oh my gosh, it showed me like for me, I'm not a person that. Will get mad. You'll have to, it'll be like, I get one, two, three. And on that three, that's it. And then I'm going off. I'm regulating. <laughs> and and that that showed me, okay, you know, yeah, you know, God still got work through me, but at the same time, listen, I can you your three chances. <laughs> I'm being fair. But um another thing um is sex. Like I it from a young age, I never imagined having kids and not being married still you know sinning and not being married that really bothers me that really bothers me to this day and that's what lets me know that God still got a lot of work to do me those two things I'm not where I, I thought I should be spiritually and the fact that I, I have kids out of wedlock and I'm still sinning in that manner you know I, I, I don't think it's cool but it's the situation that I've been living and you know what's good about that, Mika, is that uh, that shows that you still have a godly conscience. You still right. can hear him talking yep. to you. Yep. Uh, now, when you lose that, that's when that, you need to worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Because that's what keeps us saved, uh, a godly conscience. And so yeah. when you hear God talking, act on it. Don't don't ignore it and um, you know mm -hmm. keep going about your business, doing what you're doing. Take note of it. Make plans to do what you got to do. Um, pray that his grace covers you as you plan to straighten yourself up. And trust me, he knows your heart. He knows you. Okay, mm -hmm. talking to my daughter, she's trying to put provisions in to do this and do that. But um, just just continue to hear his, his voice and do what you got to do. So that, that's good. Yeah, that was good. I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> when enough is enough, you just be like, Lord, I love you more than this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you get to that point, you stop and you you cold turkey just cut and don't and, and i and i have went cold turkey <laughs> <Many times. laughs> yeah. what's up nephew <laughs> yeah so i'm trying to see what's going on <laughs> mm -hmm. i think that was yeah. the last last point last question and then uh next week sorry i'm uh, here and i wasn't able to answer the other questions but y'all okay. know mm -hmm. I have my, uh, my night routine it's all right. You got anything you want to say, baby, or anything? Um, not really. I mean, I don't know exactly what y'all was talking about at first because I didn't get on to the end. Well, we'll give you the opportunity to just answer one question. 
The first question we asked was, how are things with your heart? Oh, right now, my heart. Um, it was a description of your inner condition. Sour. My heart is sour right now. Um, not in general, but just with a couple particular people. And um, usually my heart is not sour. And usually I'm uh, quick to let things go, like very, very quick. But um, I don't know, this seems different, which um, has me thinking lately that this has to be a test. And a test of my character. And um, also a test that has come after the uplifting of Remnant Church. Because, I mean, I, I, I haven't felt like this before. And um, it just seemed, it seemed weird to me that it's just something that I just can't let go because I just feel like, like what y'all were saying, like, you know how you feel tried and like, like you think it to yourself, like, they, they might think I'm stupid or something more. Or you just think you're just gonna get over on me, or I got something for you, but I can't do that. I got something for you. I gotta just let God handle it. Yeah, but it, what it does is it makes you it the thoughts because you don't understand why do people do these things like like treating you like you like you're stupid or something, and so in your intelligence. Yes, like in your mind, you're like, I mean, do these people feel like I'm like low or something? Crazy or something like. And then the fact that they feel and the fact that they're acting like that causes you to be like, no, this got to get handled. But we cannot do that. We gotta leave it up to God. So, you know, I know right now my heart is kind of sour. And um usually it's not. So I know that. I got some work to do with it right now. So speaking of work to do, another thing we talked about was when your heart is sour, you know, I mean, it's not good practice to just not do anything. You have to confront mm -hmm. what it is that's making your heart sour. Or it, the sourness ain't going to just go away. It's going to get more rotten, if that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> we'll is take that a word, Ashley? <laughs> more rotten. <laughs> Or, uh, it's just more right. decomposed. Don't, don't add the earth. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Help me out, teacher. So, um, you got to confront those things. Um, Go get in the bed. You got to confront those things. You can't just let them sit because it's just going to make your heart get even worse. It's going to make your it's attitude. Your do not hurt. Go get in the bed. Put your head thing off. So. Sorry, y'all. Right. Did you hear what I said, though? Yes. You have um it's something that you have to confront or if you don't it'll make it worse. Yeah, yeah. So close us out in prayer. Uh, unless anybody got any closing remarks. Nope, I'm gonna finish reading chapter one and then start on oh, chapter. Oh, yeah, I gotta read it too. But I did want to say based off um Mandy's comment about not giving God time, and this is for me as well, that we can't give God our leftovers. Mm. Like oh, we went throughout mm. the day now. Well, all I have is five minutes and then we barely give them that because we tired. So just be tied 10%. Let's give them the first 10% wow. of our That's day. You know? yeah. Let's Come on, man. that way. So then by the time you ain't got to worry about it when you're tired and in the bed, it's already done, you know? So let's let's try to do that. Time and, our time. And, I like that, Ashley. And how about this? Um, While we're doing that, See, I done forgot already. See, Lord, help me with my memory, You're too Lord. young to have this bad memory. Yes, help me with my memory. How about, Ashley, repeat your last few sentences again, if you remember. <laughs> um, I was just saying, like, we tied 10% of our income. Let's okay, stop tie. right there. You just brought it back. Okay, <laughs> how about this? If we confront our issues with God first, and we come to him and face the root problem, he'll give us time throughout the rest of our day to do the things that we need to do. Hold on, that? Ashley and Mika. Well, with the hold on, hold on. Just like with our money, though, Mika, he mm -hmm. makes provision for us to pay this and pay that. 
but we squander and mess up our money. I think it's the same thing with our time. He give us time to do it, give us 24 hours in a day, mm. but we do mm. what we want to do, just like we do what we want to do with our money, and we mess up That's our true. money, same thing with our time. So That's we just got to be obedient or uh, uh, good stewards, even over our time, just like Everything. we are with our money. Our money is his, our time is his, our, everything is his. So we have to be good stewards, like you said. So, and give them the first fruits there you of go. everything. I like, mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Okay, let's see if uh, Shamana going. Baby, you mind closing us out in prayer? Yeah, we'll, we'll wait. You can come You can come right here and pray. Kelsey, oh. you want to come close out in prayer? Hey, Kelsey Belsey. Hey, Kelsey. I can't put it on the screen. She got her bonnet on. You know they talking about oh. bonnet. Now. <laughs> I knew I, knew I had my bonnet on Sunday. She had to go to bed. Let <laughs> my baby say a prayer. She got it. Now I say the prayer. Could everyone bow your heads and close your eyes, please? God, we just want to say thank you for everything you've done for us today. Oh. God, we just want to uplift those who have a heart problem. Whatever it is that they're in need of, please touch them right now. God, help yes. us to think clearer. Help yes. us to see things the way we should see them. Help yes. us to say the things that we should say. And help us to not say things that may hurt others or harm us or our character. God, yes. we ask you to be with us tonight as we sleep. Yes. Help us to think happy thoughts. Anything that is not like you, we ask you to remove it. In Jesus' yes, name. God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.